Welcome back. Wow, so prom. Excellent class. <laughs> wow, impressive. Welcome back, everyone. Yes. Okay, so we shall begin. Very good. Um, so from a little bit of history of assessment, I picked it up from the YouTube. I thought it was interesting. You know, uh, learning is not just for now, but for the future. So I thought I would share. Now, the next part I want to share is, uh, let's share our experience of uh, going through the assessment in ACLP. Okay. No need to mention trainer's name. Uh, uh, I just I have a few pointers just to uh, check your prior knowledge. Okay, so what did your assessor do in the final assessment? Don't mention assessor name. I don't want to know. <laughs> I want, but can you kind of remember what your assessor do in the final assessment? Yes. Uh, they. They will brief us on what are we supposed to to do later in the assessment, the, the steps you are going to go through and the entire plan. Uh, yeah, then from there, uh, we are more prepared on what we are going to um, to expect. Uh. Yeah. Yes, very yes. good. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is to manage the expectation. Okay, very good. <coughs> okay, very corporate language. Okay, so this is our... Yeah, briefing the scope of assessment, okay, and to manage the expectation. What else do you think your assessor do in, in the final assessment? They always let you know that you can appeal if, or, yeah, you can appeal if you are, I mean, if you are not yet competent or something like that. Ah, not bad. Not many assessors do briefing, you know, of this. This uh, I'm asking to check who of your previous trainer. Very good. You have a right to appeal. I cannot mention me, but I, I know all of them. Right to but, appeal. Yeah, but normally it's at the end of the session, you 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 say. Ah, usually yeah. uh, we briefed it at the beginning. Right to appeal uh, is yeah. mainly for uh, if the result is not yet competent, yes. the candidate has a right to appeal. You're not okay. happy. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not, you're not in Bhutan. We are not in the state of no. happiness. No, I mean, not happy with the results we, we feel. That's why you're not no. No, no, no. It's not about happiness. If what? You can only challenge the <coughs> result if what? If the learner feels what? It's not about happiness. It's about learner thinks what? Thinks, he, thinks he's, he's competent, but you give me not, not competent, ma. So, ah, so it's not one. about happiness. Ah, so you think that there is a uh, like with some, with some. Um, <laughs> it's not about happiness. It's about unfair. Yeah, okay, unfair. it's an unfair practice. Can you see my type text in here? Yeah, because yesterday or the day before, a uh, Zoom <coughs> launched one more field. Now I can type it. Y'all can see. Okay, for MIC result, candidate has right to appeal if the candidate thinks that the if. They think that the result is out unfair. The assessment outcome is unfair. Seven days Ah, uh, those are the details. But different center will have different details. Ah, uh, the then the process or procedure they call it. <coughs> I'm not going to type the procedure here. Okay. Procedure U R E. Okay. Good. Ken. Mm. What else? What else? I think mm -hmm. two things that uh, appear to me is about verifying the. Why? Why is that important? Okay, Let's verify. Okay, good class. Why do you think must verify the ID? Your ID. What do you think? To make sure you are. Uh, is the is the uh, correct candidate that we are we are assessing, and there is not someone else taking your place to answer the question on correct. Account. So you are not the twin brother or the twin sister, mm. yeah. Okay, uh, the, uh you are right. Okay, to authenticate the key word is the authenticate. You are the correct person. Okay, authenticate the candidate. 
based on the number and the ID. Yeah. The second part is more for administrative reason. Okay, if your name is different from the IC, you, you will not get your statement of attainment for every module. The, that means the process work will be wrong. You key in the wrong name, uh, your cert can't get through. Your classmate get the result, but you have not gotten yours. Okay, one, then uh, my back-end staff have to call you to validate that very often. Yeah, so it's more for administrative accuracy. But uh, mainly it's just to authenticate you're the correct person. Okay, good. What else does your assessor do? Yeah. Two more things that I need to see that uh, two of them constantly ask, uh, do you need to take a, a break before you start for your assessment? You need to prepare the candidate so that uh, yeah, no halfway through, uh, then you find that it has a momentum break somewhere. Uh, okay, uh, very efficient of your assessor. Uh, uh, sometimes we'll check, do you have any special requirement for me to take note before you start? Because some candidates uh, have forgot to take their blood pressure medication uh, and uh, they may get giddy, etc. You know, uh, so we usually will just check a little bit out of it. Okay, good, very good. Anything else? I think some assessors uh, make an attempt to break the eyes a little and uh, let us know how long this assessment is going to be and uh, things like uh, this is going to be an open book assessment you can refer to your notes yes, okay small talk is very important is to build trust okay uh, build trust assessor don't do well if they build small talk without eye contact and fully present in front of the candidate because no trust is built no business to talk later uh, my Joel agree, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. And then uh, uh, you mentioned about uh, building small talk, and then uh, what else do you mention? Uh, Melissa. Uh, most assessors will say that it is an open book. So ah, open yeah, book. Okay, books. if it's an open book, you tell them it's open book, especially uh, before oral questions. Okay, you can hi highlight there's an open book assessment. Okay, at the beginning, uh, we may not do that. I, I'm very functional. Before our question, if it's open book, I'll tell them it's open book, I'll tell them X, X number of questions. I'll tell them how long for the oral question. Yeah? Okay. Any, anything else? Uh, I think also can take stock. Take stock the time you stop, pause for a while, and you do the to so fight clarification. Yeah, mentally, the, the, the candidate is there. So you need some space for you to mentally Yes, because sometimes they are too scared to ask questions. Also, you having a pause to ask for clarification at least twice is very important. Okay, candidate feels that the uh, assessor, as assessor as a job has powers. Okay, so uh, we have be very careful the use of powers as an assessor. So one of the area is candidate might be too scared to ask questions. Um, and uh, one of the things assessor would do is pause and say, oh, so far do you have any question? Okay, do you have anything to clarify? You know, and then when you ask, you have the eye contact, you just make sure that you're scanning, everything is uh, in order, everyone is in good state. Um, yeah, uh, so both parties can clarify before we start. Okay, very good point. Yes. Okay, good. Any other things other than preparing candidate that you have observed? Um, when the assessor conduct the assessment, they ask like leading questions and open-ended questions. Hmm, very good. Uh, usually they ask open-ended questions. Uh, the rephrase question. Uh, several times, but without using the question. Uh, when you rephrase a question, the technique is don't look at the answer to rephrase the question. Because when you look at the answers to, without looking at the answers. Because if you look at the answers to rephrase question, uh, it's called hinting. And you're actually giving your answers away. 
Yeah, so one of the technique, yes. Okay, uh, this is probably uh, assessing knowledge. Okay, so what does the assessor use to, uh, when they conduct assessment? Anyone <coughs> saw it? No impression? Okay, never mind. There's a briefing checklist, I suppose. Uh, yes, there's a briefing checklist under here. Yes, that's for the briefing. But conduct assessment, what documents do you use? Mm, I think um, probably checklist, anecdotal records. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, but what do you observe during uh, your assessor? What do they do? Well, they, will they, tell you that, they will tell you that uh, occasionally they will be looking down not because they don't like you but they are jotting down notes. <laughs> okay, so you need to invite clarification then you highlight that you're taking notes. Okay, that's all under the briefing. Okay, I want to move towards the conduct. What do you observe the assessor do during the assessment? This is where they tell you whether you are competent or yet not yet competent. Oh, that, that, that is... That's uh, behind already. Uh, that's behind already. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, that's behind already. I think, uh, I think they might be like referring to our submission, our written assignment. Then they ask a calling according to what they return and ask us this why why it's still uh. okay they they look at the learner's work so if yeah. it's a plan they look at your they observe your work okay. yeah then they put they ask and ask and okay yeah. they read your plan and ask okay but this potentially we pre-read beforehand uh ask a question to clarify okay yeah clarify this <clears> is more for the plan part what else do they do when you are doing your workplace coaching, when you are doing your workplace demonstration, what, what do your assessors do? Ask questions. When you are performing the demonstration, they ask questions. During your performance, they ask questions. No, they shouldn't. They, they are observing. Ask. Observing your entire process. What do you execute during, during the entire process? And maybe write down some notes candidate performance yeah. and they write down notes of yeah. performance and uh, record the observations and yeah. on uh, 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 what do they observe record them on uh, okay things they so need to improve on uh, or everything you record yeah. areas they have passed and the area that they didn't do well and they observe them in what? Only they will record right like a piece of paper. M four like in M four in yeah, M four M four demonstration. What do you record them on? Uh, the what the the validation 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 plan or what? Uh, okay, that it's is a, more for peer review. But uh, in your part M4, at the bottom. Uh, do you remember you have a assessment of learning checklist with skills assessment and oral questions? Yes. Uh, so Very when you're performing the skills, you mark on the task that you perform the oral question, you mark on the oral questions. Yeah. So over in this module, you must actually have a assessment of learning record as a base and then you observe and mark against the the what the task against the, the criteria in the assessment record yeah observation checklist of record itself then you ask question to clarify if they are missing things they may ask you to redo certain parts then you will assess the knowledge by asking the question in the assessment record and if candidate uh, not sure or got the answer wrong, they will rephrase question. Yeah. So at the end of it, you will inform the learner of the assessment. What? Results, yeah? We call it the outcome. Okay. Uh, other than informing of the outcome, what uh, do they also tell the candidate? 
to acknowledge the outcome. Okay, acknowledge the outcome. The outcome by signing. Okay, good. And then, uh, do they give you feedback? Yeah, they potentially were given you feedback. Yes, I saw a bit of not here. Yes, okay, give feedback. What kind of feedback do they give the candidate? Strengths and uh, weaknesses. Strengths. And areas to <coughs> refine further, improve. Yep. And then they also do a bit of encouragement, right? Yes. Ah, can? Ah, this is what you do oh, for assessor. <coughs> okay. Do you prefer assessor to observe using checklists or uh, her own criteria? Remember, uh, uh, she, we don't really see what the assessor see. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Uh, but in M4, you got a, a spirit of it. Okay, so you actually have an observation checklist. So if you are the assessor, you want to have your formal test papers uh, to conduct your assessment. So you need to have your formal observation checklist. Yeah, you need to have your assessment documents, I call it in general first whether you're assessing skills or knowledge uh, ready so that you can collect the uh, evidence for the skills and the knowledge. Okay, good. Very good. Uh, do you see anything about the assessment setup? Cannot remember. No? Assessment setup? No? No? Okay. Depending, like for M1, she, she will position herself at a, a, a location she can see yeah corner and then she can see the presentation yeah so she uh, set up her table in such a way that she can it will not obstruct the presentation hmm. yeah uh, so you actually decide how you want to set up by deciding what the learner needs to show and then you set up from there yeah then do you think the assessor actually check uh uh uh, tripping hazards. What do you think? Uh, I cannot recall. Yeah, potentially some may not tell you. Okay. Uh, for me, I check for no tripping hazards. But instead of me checking, I always ask my learner. Uh, can you tell me what have you checked for workplace safety and health? Yeah. Okay. So you also have to set up the room to facilitate the evidence gathering yeah uh, depending on what type of evidence you are collecting uh, where you need to stand you need to set up the room for that so potentially uh, what is the document you will be using when you are setting up I don't think your module 1 trainer teach that but your module 4 definitely have this document what is the uh, uh, document that you use to help you set up Resource resource checklist. Checklist. Yes, in, in module 4, it's called the Workplace Resource Checklist. In my module 1, I cover it called a Logistic Checklist. That's usually what we call, okay, Logistic Checklist for most companies. In E1, you're going to develop a Logistic Checklist. And then in the checklist, you need to have everything listed that you need. So that on that day, when you go there, you just do a final check itself. Yeah? So this is one of your deliverable in 7.5 of your assessment plan. Yep. Okay. So you set up room, ensure no trippings and workplace okay safety and health requirement. And you also have to make sure your role play resource are there. And then all your assessment documents are there. Are, are ready. Okay, because without the assessment documents, the assessor will be running all over the place to look for the documents itself. Okay, good. Good recall by the class. Okay, uh, this is our memory of uh, what has taken place across. Okay, so that will form the basis. Um, so, okay, good. Now, lots of recap done. So, 
when I started the class with the video, we talked about uh, what is a competency, okay? It includes a set of skills, knowledge, and attitude to perform a task, okay? Although in the skills framework, they call this, they call the A and the K the ability statements, okay? Uh, ability is not the correct word to represent skills and knowledge. Ability has a more innate inherent in it. Okay, uh, the original definition, not at a national level, uh, when you're in the training in the workplace, you talk about skills, knowledge, and attitude. Skills is a show me evidence, so you use role play or skills practice. Yeah, attitude is also a role play or a skills practice. When the learner is performing the work, this is where you can observe the attitude in the work itself. In your M4, if you do the customer service case study for retail and FMP, your task could be greet the customer courteously in a friendly manner. Uh, courteously in a friendly manner will be part of the attitude to show yeah? uh, in the lesson itself, if your task step covers some of it. So show me and tell me to cover the KSA. Okay. Some people don't call it KSA or SKA, they prefer the word ASK, ask. Okay, in the training business, we are dealing with this three. Good. So what is a competency? It's a set of knowledge and skills and attitude that are required to perform the activities of a job or a given job function. So in your M4, you have a set of total tasks. Every one set of total tasks is a set of competency they need to learn. Yeah? In M4 page 1, the set of total tasks, the total tasks reflect the, the tasks that the staff need to perform at work. And as a result, each of the tasks in the total task is a competency. Okay, so in your M2, Competency is a set of abilities and your knowledge and drawn out for the knowledge statements that are relevant to the industry and the organization. So for this module itself, we are conducting an assessment uh, for a level one learner, retail staff, selling product called product advisory in Live Smart Emporium. We'll come to that today. Okay. So our L01. What is an assessment? Okay. What is an assessment? Let me see. Uh, Rakesh, could you read this for me? What is an assessment? Okay. An yeah. assessment is a process of collecting evidence to make a decision about a person's skills, abilities, and knowledge, whether an individual achieved a certain level of competency. Excellent. The assessment is a process of collecting evidence to make a decision for who to make a decision. For the assessor to make assessor. a decision. Ah, whether the candidate has achieved a certain level of competency. Okay, so it depends on the, uh, the uh, uh, type of assessment and the purpose of assessment and the context of assessment. If you are in a school-based and environment, you are always assessed on knowledge. But if you are in the workplace, that's where your show me and tell me will come the KSA will come in. So that's where an assessment must begin with identifying the, by identifying the purpose and context of assessment. Thank you for reading to the class to take the voice <coughs> away from I do that sometimes. So uh, there are several concepts, uh, but I'm not going to cover them, every one of them today. I potentially will come back to this tomorrow night. Uh, I but I'll just cover maybe one example on uh, what is the type of assessment and what are some of the details we will cover uh, during an assessment or tonight. Then I'm going to spend some time looking at your assessment plan because the earlier you understand and see your assessment plan, the earlier you get to know what is an assessment plan itself. Okay, good. So. So I would need the group to do uh
25, 26, 27. Okay, group 1, group 2, group 3. Uh, group 1 will do page 25, 26 and 27 slides from this deck. And what you got to do is to open up the fact sheet from my email. Are you able to find the fact sheets from my email, E1 fact sheet? Uh, then you read uh, the types of assessment in page 2 of the fact sheet. And what is a competency-based assessment in page 1 of the fact sheet? Then you will answer your question for 25, 26, 27. This is 25, 26, 27, group 2, 1, 2, 3 for the types of assessment. And the other one would be uh, what is a competency-based assessment? Draw a diagram to show an assessor conducting a competency-based assessment where they are shown and tell me evidence. So I'm going to give each group uh, 20 minutes to read uh, page 1 and page 2 and answer uh, these three questions. Let me see. It's a slide. Uh, in the night seven and thirty one. This is the uh uh, group 1, Group 2, Group 3 only cover this slide after you read page 1 and page 2 of the document. Is that okay? Uh, as of now, is the class okay if I do a, a normal break, breakout group for all of you? Manual, uh, automatic uh, breakout for all of you? Is that okay? Can? Actually, I only have two groups, right? Right? 5-5 five, five person is okay? Yeah. So, I will break your into two groups. So, we have Group 1, Group 2. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Group one, group two. No one is doing the. Uh, no one is doing the. Uh, no one is doing group three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we open the room. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Whoa, we are together again. Yay. Yay. Back to one more person. Yeah. Who can, yeah. Who, who, can share, who can share the screen now? Because I can't access the Google Slides page. Okay, I can share. Thank you. Hey, how do you how do you come to this this uh slide uh? It's in the Google Drive. Uh, key is in your email. No, us. The Gmail, the Gmail email is it? Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so okay. So it will be posted in the Google Drive. So you oh. just need to access your Google Drive. Okay. And then the PowerPoint, the Google slide is over there. Uh. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I got. I give you. I give you. Hang on. I go and find. But just now I tried to log in. Uh, the all prompts for. Uh, I give you the link already, King. Request of what code or what? Huh? Got request ah? I think it's open. I, yeah. I give you through WhatsApp. You can open? Yeah, yeah. I, I try I try that right now. But just now I think CF got uh share that. Yeah. Link, uh. I try I, I try to lock it now. Uh. So we are in group two, right? Yeah. Group two. Uh. So we are in group two where right? we got the two things. Yeah. Six, uh. I saw your I read page two. Okay, I have to do twenty six and what? That's a twenty six and thirty. Yeah. That's a re request so assess day. Do you need to request assess? Are you? Is your email a uh? It was it a Gmail? That's yeah. why no, no, no. This is a AIA. I will open for you. I will open for you. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. No wonder. <laughs> I sign it. I sign it. Yeah, I'll I'll go out and uh assign for you. Uh, do all of you got the fact sheets with you in my original email, yeah? Okay, let's go. Yes, 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. Nadia, <coughs> uh, fact sheet, it was in the email tau, all PDF one. Yeah, I know. So I have to share that one now. Uh. Yep. <laughs> hey, Salah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm going to share the fact sheet. Okay, okay. 
Email dia email Eh Nadia I know lah oh. Olympic You look like macam swimming <laughs> Dia Behind the <laughs> You know how lazy I am You join the diving is it I don't do <laughs> Diving <laughs> apa <laughs> Okay, 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 Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Am I going fast? Okay. Is this the one? Yeah, it's eight pages, eh? No. Read the topics assigned the fact sheet. We are doing six pages. Seven. Yeah, ours is twenty six. No, ours is th twenty six thirty. What are we supposed to do? Sorry, I'm sharing, so I cannot see what you see. Okay, from what I know, right, we have ah. to match the type. Of assessment card to this timeline below, which is uh, our full page 26. So over here, there's continuous assessment, subjective uh, assessment, diagnostic on. assessment, and formative assessment. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, so So for diagnostic assessment, right, is actually uh, from what I see, right, is before the start of the formal course or training programming is before lesson. So that is diagnosis assessment. Let me see if I can shift or not. Oh, I can. Okay. So diagnosis uh, assessment is before lesson. Uh -huh. um, formative assessment came to help learner improve. I think summative always last, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah always last. Yeah. Then for the formative is, is a, a, a cumulative or continuous. What's the difference between formative and summative? Formative, oh, is does, formative is at least a cumulative or progressive. Formative, let's read. Huh? Summative, at least, like the, the, the end part, summarize. Huh? It focuses more on providing feedback on strengths and area of improvement. Is that our self reflection and peer evaluation? That, 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 that reflection. But our end for like that, like that, that should be end of lesson, really. Like, then continuous assessment is during lesson. Yeah. Okay, yeah, done. Correct. Really. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. So, formative and summative is about side by side like that. Yeah, side by side. You know, I just put that side by side. Okay, so then we have to do 26 and 27, right? I saw just now. No, I was 26 and what? 30, 30. 30. 30. 26 and 30, 30. Okay, let's go to slide 30. So now we go to 30. Ah, 26 and 30. What is competency based assessment. assessment? Draw a diagram visual and assessor conducting a competency. Competency, competency, based. competency. Like our M4, the demonstration is the learner able to demonstrate or repeat our steps. We still need to read this part. Like our M4, hello. <laughs> go back to the fact sheet. Lah. <laughs> where, where? What I'm scrolling, scrolling now. Competency based assessment. Uh, the process of collecting evidence making judgment how to make prata so basically how uh, I mean, you see the person make prata yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so is, 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 is a pasta crispy or not crispy <laughs> uh, I always not, not like crispy. this example yeah. you always use it and it's then mm. it's not crispy enough uh, not competent the competency not based assessment isn't it what just now she said like what show me tell me the uh, ASK la basically. So uh draw draw a diagram to show an assessor conducting. We need to draw a diagram. Dra diagram? Yeah. We need to draw a diagram, guys. Okay. Diagram. 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 
Wait ah. This is page 26, okay. Okay, so we are on 26. Diagnostic assessment. To match the types of assessment card to this timeline. Diagnostic is before we start. Continuous is during. Formative. So this is done ah. This is done already. This one just now Rakesh do already. Yeah, I do already. Okay, yeah, so now I mean, go 30. at 30. 30. Uh, 30. Go straight yeah. to 30. 30. Yeah. So we need to draw a diagram. Yeah. Um, so an assessor conducting competency-based assessment. Draw a diagram. What kind of flow is it? Diagrams here. Diagram. Is yeah. Any idea what what it means? Reading, reading, reading. Draw. Draw a diagram. I think the steps are the steps. We can put it. Competency assessment. Uh, maybe you can look for a, a teacher with a holding a clipboard and a pen. Diagram to show. Diagram. Like workflow is it? No. The, the definition I, I, I of diagram is a workflow, right? Or you're really talking about the picture. Clip cut, clip art, no, right? Which one? Ah, clip art. Is it a clip art? Oh, a diagram. This diagram is something like workflow. clip art. Is it a workflow? I think it's more of a workflow, right, guys. So basically, right, I don't know. Because right now I'm looking at the canvas, right? Ah. I'm looking at a, what? Prepare and conduct a simple assessment, right? Mm. From what I see, right, they say this assessment plan where must be right. Uh, right. Mm. Uh, first thing they say is assessment logistic checklist. We need to do a checklist. Mm. Then followed by candidate briefing checklist. Am I uh, sharing it? I'm sharing it. Uh. Yeah, you are doing that. So okay. I'm not sure. Is this this okay. the? Okay. Sorry, what? I should I I share. Yeah, you share lah. Okay, okay Nadia, you stop share first. Okay. Okay. Done. So we need to judge against the competency based competency standards. So you must draw maybe I insert like you all look at the Google Doc, you are looking at the PowerPoint right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll install a shape bar. Then after that I'll insert the arrow. So you're using the ASK, is it? I'm using this one, no? Are you looking at the... Yeah, la, so basically it's the ASK, like attitude, knowledge and skill. Yeah. Alright. What do you think? Is that good? Or anyone have any other ideas? Yeah. Okay. Actually, if we if they just want a diagram, we can just do like this kind of small diagram, right? Yeah. You know. Can we like just copy this one? <laughs> 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 but, but instead of abilities, is attitude, right? Is it? Yeah, attitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that, lah. I think it's just a diagram to show when we. Do the assessment, right? We comprise of these three in the flow, I think. This one from Google. Hey okay, guys, guys, can I share with you something? Yeah. Oh. Wait, uh, I, I stopped my. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is the one that you are looking for or not. Maybe just correct me, lah. Is there something like that? I think it should be like this. Eh? I like, think this one is more like the flow of the assessment. This is the whole you know? thing, right? You know? mm. This is the whole thing, right? The so whole, we are the whole, saying... The whole process, lah. Or maybe it's just the we, we, <laughs> we organize into a workflow or diagram to and fit all these things, is it? No need, lah. You can cut a photograph and put it in, lah. Got no time already, lah. Mm. Yeah. Ah, cut screen and put it in. Yeah. Mm. So basically, you can start from uh, step two onwards. Yeah, step, step one two. is actually uh, before the actual day itself. Yeah. Oh, so step two is the prepare candidate for assessment. Uh? Uh, no, step two is the uh, setting up set site. 
Oh, okay. Oh, it's really, oh. really the whole flow. Oh, yeah, this, this is the whole flow. It is the one. Uh, so we have to take this one. Uh, prepare assessment venue resource. Okay. Make, make to one good flow. La. No need. La. Just cut and paste over will do. Draw oh. some arrow. Uh, good enough. Okay. Oh. Mm, uh, can I, how, how long do you need? Five more minutes? Uh, five more minutes. Uh, can five Should more minutes? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Ken. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay lah guys, uh, who wanna do this? I draw some boxes ready. You know what I did lah? I draw the boxes. What time ah? Five, five more minutes? Just copy and paste. You type ah? Okay. I type one. You all can, I don't know, edit? Want to edit? Can I edit? Edit lah. I guess. Uh, don't need so much, I just prepare assessment venue. Then the third one, prepare candidate for assessment. Then conduct assessment according uh, to assessment okay. plan. Yeah. For assessment. You just take the four main, uh, right? Yeah. Prepare, prepare, conduct, conduct prepare assessment. and review. Conduct assessment, right? Yeah, yeah, according to assessment plan. Then number four. Reflect and four. review assessment. Number four. Reflect? Reflect and review assessment. Is it, is it reflect or the observe record evidence? Okay, so I, I, I see from her. I see from here, so reflect and review assessment. Uh, I see from her that her summary. Oh, yeah. okay. Just use this. Okay, then after that, that's it, right? It's mm. more. Mm. Okay, lah. Can we? So the box, the box we reduce, lah, right? Uh, mm. Yeah, lah. Can we reduce, lah? Okay, lah. This one all no need, I delete, lah. Yeah, lah, delete. Eh, the, the name uh, we put, lah, Rakai. What? Raj, Rajiv, don't know who. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then put lah, Lisa, Lisa, you put your your photo lah, the photo that KS eating. Just now, I I close the window already. <laughs> <laughs> but that one is ability. Let me find it. Lah. Knowledge. So was what knowledge, skills, skills and attitude. attitude let me find. Hmm. Okay, okay. I I I use something. Ah, uh. I put something. Okay, I think done already. Do we need to write this competency based assessment only? Ah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I I. I insert one one image lah. Huh? Can lah, can. Later. Later, who's going to present? Isyang ah. Isyang ah, okay lah. Okay lah. Hmm, okay lah. Can this picture can or not? Can. 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 Get on. <coughs> Thank you. Thank oh. you.
Iya, dia juga suka lupu sih. Wah, stress ya. Ya, dia kelihatan di kalau pula ya. lah. Okay, your group is okay. I can uh, bring your back already. Yes. Okay, can? Can. Welcome back. This class is a quite a cognitively strong class. Yeah, they look for notes la. <laughs> they say how the website got not, not enough notes. I say yeah, yeah, yeah. Read, read my slides a lot more details. Yes. <laughs> my slides is a whole deck of uh, notes. Yes. I've not added the oral presentation question. I thought first night it's good to show you all the assessment plan. Mm. Or else we are talking in blind, what are we doing? Yeah, no anchor. Hmm? I thought I closed the room already. I think, they are, I think they are waiting to be. Yes, yeah. mm. <laughs> Very good. Welcome back, everyone. So now we are going to uh, share uh, our work with the class. Okay. Uh, let's launch. Okay. So we have group one and group two sharing for group one. Who is going to share on group one? Yes. Where is uh, the BB, the first four assessment type? Yes. Mm. Okay, assessment to uh, before training to diagnose the learners uh, where they are. Diagnostic. Okay, good. So this is where the training starts from here to here. Okay, where the training starts. So during the training itself is a formative assessment. This is where trainers what? What does trainers do for this? Uh, my group one. What does trainers do for formative assessment? Oi? My group one silent. Oh, what As you training? know, like let the learner know areas for improvement. Okay. So and then um, make changes and refine. Yeah, okay. adjust accordingly. So be before that happens, trainer must first conduct a set of learning activities yeah or skills practice you call it learning activities or skills practice then your feedback can come in realize that formative assessment anchor a lot on giving feedback but so we must think what must we draw is the learning activities that we must put in place then we do feedback yes good that's very good okay and summative uh, assessment. What's what is summative assessment? Okay.
Okay, so in your M4, right, your trainer will say, let's practice first round. And that will be your formative or summative. Formative, yeah? Then the second round that you practice, that will lend itself. Then they give feedback at the, uh, after coaching one. Then after that, they say, okay, we're going to run the submissive round. Okay. And after that, she will give you a final result from here. Yep. Same for coaching and for assessment. Okay. So, so uh, this one always gives itself a final grade or a final confirmation status. Okay. So, uh, your module one to module four is uh, there are formative assessment before and at always at the end, there is a submissive assessment itself. Okay. So what is continuous assessment? What do you think? What is continuous assessment? My own take this not only on and seeing this work called continuous assessment is throughout every stage you could stop. So you have to pose a, a question to the whole time. Uh, 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 yes, uh, but that is more a formative classroom assessment. Not uh, continuous. Okay, anyone has an experience of continuous assessment? It's small works and small work and assignments in between the lessons till the end of the lesson. Very good. So the lesson you are graded on the small tasks that you have done. Uh, they are graded in between. I think that's a good point. Okay, so for continuous assessment, it would be more like uh, poly, we have term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4. Is it like a progressive kind of assessment as well? Uh, like yeah. simple to complex kind of assessment? Potentially, because you do term 1, term 3, term 4, uh, the topics go from simple to complex in a school environment. Okay, uh, and then you have a final assessment. Wait, uh, final, final exam that contribute maybe 20%. Then the rest are... 10%, 10% or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, so totally, our uh, total will be 100%. Maybe the final is 40%. Then the 20 times 4 is 80. Yeah. Or 15% for term 1, term 2, 60% for 4 terms plus 40% for final. Then this whole becomes continuous. So in a poly system, this is what always happens. They have term 1, semester 1, semester 2. And the final, they add everything up that equals uh, assessment. So continuous assessment is actually during the study. It may not start the same point as the training, but you will start at maybe end of term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, plus a final exam that ends itself a final grade itself. Ken? Uh, is that clearer? Thanks, uh, Isang, for the inputs itself. Uh, question. Yes, please. Uh, is it, can I say simply because uh, I try to find the point that continuous assessment and summative assessment, are they are more like a structural kind of assessment compared to the formative assessment? When, when I say structural, it's more desktop, more tangible in a way to get the results. Ah, okay, based on the uh, IL document, uh, a summative assessment lends itself a final grade. This is in school. Uh, at work, it may lend itself a final confirmation status. Okay, in the, uh, because a lot of all these terms we draw on school. Yeah, but uh, so sometimes your M4 actually has, uh, they don't have grade. Yeah, M4 is just, uh, your M4 is slightly different. M4 is uh, OJT training. Okay, and then after that, follow up one OJT training. I pick a different color, orange, on the job training. Then follow up session one, follow up session two. Yeah, uh, we didn't cover final assessment in, in here. So potentially, uh, a stakeholder will say initially uh, on the job training, I observe you within three days. After that, observe you within 10 to 15 days. Then after that, within uh, one month after your OJT, I have a final assessment. That is possible. Uh, especially for a union-based organization, they like to conduct the assessment after on-site observation. They don't like to conduct assessment immediately after the training. 
Why? Because you want to see whether the staff can perform or cannot perform. And if they cannot perform, the role of the supervisor or the workplace trainer is to give feedback and help them perform. And when they are dealing with NPC fair price, giant, cold storage, you know, uh, it's all about practice make perfect. And a good coach and a supervisor that can guide you along the way. Yeah, so that's why for a lot of these large organizations, they train their staff in workplace training. The one level lesser than ACLP, your module 4 and one. So the workplace trainer can actually uh, coach the staff and uh, do OJT as well and teach the staff if they make mistakes, they will re-demonstrate and they will do it. In fact, your module 4 workplace coaching need not be sitting down and have a conversation. Uh, depending on the support the staff needs, sometimes you can actually do a demonstration and practice on the spot and allow the person to practice. Then you do the rounding off of options. That is also possible. You can weave another uh, skills practice inside your coaching conversation. It's just that we don't have that time for it in our morning. Okay? So uh, very simply based on that. So when your boss asks you that, I want to assess the people. Oh, then you, this is where you're going to ask yourself, huh? Oh, you want to assess the people. Okay, can you tell me, do you have a final grade? You want to have a final result? You have one the final result is this. Okay? If you want to have term one, term two, term three formal result and a final result, that would be continuous assessment. But if we are just looking at, uh, I just want to give training and give them feedback on how they have performed. This is like your M4. Or oh, OJT only? Or classroom only? Maybe plus follow up and follow up. Uh, yeah? However, my assessment is to pre-qualify the person for the job. Then it won't be this. If I want to select a person for a job, it will be diagnostic. It's like going to uh, uh, hire nurses from Myanmar to come in here. Okay, they actually have diagnostic assessment in Myanmar. And after they come into Singapore, the hospitals will also do a diagnostic assessment. And then after that, they will see whether they can do can, can they further close the performance gap? They can, they will structure the training. But those who are far behind, they will send them as reject back. They won't accept them in our system. That is diagnostic before the person joins a training program. Is that okay? Ten for my first group? Okay, let's just see my second group. Later, later, later. Okay, so uh, diagnostic is clear. So I'm going to draw a diagram here. Uh, I want to push the continuous lower for this group. Huh? And I'm going to do the continuous. So during lesson, I will map this closer to the front. Continuous assessment, I'll map it this way. Okay? And then it lends itself a final result. So this two itself has a final result for here. Okay? Formative is when I, if I have a classroom, this is what I always do. I will always have a this is the start of training this is the end of training ah, training start okay training ends and then after that assessment begins final assessment okay that will be summative directly Okay. Okay. Uh, in IAL, right? Uh, all IAL training are structured training program. Structured training program can have final assessment or no final assessment. The definition of structured is what? What do you think the definition of structured is? Does structured must have an assessment or no need to have an assessment? Must have an assessment. No. no no, your M4, is it structured? WSQ courses that's short, no need, don't, don't have... Um, WSQ don't have, uh, all have assessment. But yeah. what's the definition of structured training? What's the definition of structured training? In M1, what is your definition of structured training? 
M1. What's the definition of structured training in M1? He must have what? Based on your experience in nine, M1. Nine steps. Nine steps. Uh, yes. Yes. Nine steps, but not enough. They must have what? WA1 or WA2? Which one? Learning, ob learning objectives. Uh, yes. You, uh, for your M1, is your LO and what else is structured? Including WA1B. Uh, what is your WA1B module 1? Lesson plan. Yes. So maybe Gane or uh, Coke. Okay. Is a lesson plan. So why is lesson plan with the LO inside structured? Because it's a clearly written document. That's the meaning of structured. Okay, module 1 doesn't have an assessment plan. Module 3, is it structured? Structured. Is it structured? Your asynchronous, is it structured? Your, your LMS is a structure. Your synchronous, is it structured? Yeah. Because your synchronous, you have to run your lesson, right? Mm. Okay, so do you remember the document you submitted to structure your entry? The server model and ICAT, right? And the oh, that is a theory, uh, key. Oh, summer five steps. Theory. How, uh, yes, you stage it. Remember, you wrote a plan that, that outlined that. It's uh. not the summer five stages, it's your. Because you cannot tell your boss that this is a structure because I use summer five stages. That is not. There's just words in the air, it gets disappeared. So the purpose of structured, huh? what's the purpose of structured? The meaning of structured is, it can be, it is consistent, it's consistent. What, what do you mean, what do you think I mean by this? It means another trainer, they take your plan, they can run it. If you say Ghani Knife Fence, the trainer doesn't know what you're talking about. We need to have the full lesson plan. The Ghani is just a theory. The Selman is just a theory. But your lesson plan is the one that outlines your process of how you conduct the lesson. And Nadia, you're right. All the PSQ courses need to have structured training program. Or else every trainer go in and throw stone and, and there's no consistency at all across trainers. Okay, in IL, we have a structured lesson plan, but we can deviate from it. But when we deviate from it, our lesson plan must be better than Okay, uh, and then of course Aya will vet to see whether our lesson is thorough, our learning outcome is covered in every LO, everything that we evaluate your lesson plan in. The instructional methods, is it correct? Is there a learning activity? Is there a variety of activities? Take for example. Okay, so your M4, what is your structured plan in M4? Your demonstration is, is the structure then the LMS is that considered the structure? Uh, L, uh, M4 M4 has no LMS. So if it's asynchronized lesson, is that the structure that means you go into your Google classroom? Well, M4 is the demonstration with the breakdown on the steps, the crystal uh, they want. Can I'll come back to uh, M3 later, Nadia. Yes, okay. and which document is that for M4? For M4 is your written assignment what? Two and written assignment? Three. Three, yeah, very good. Why is WA2 structured? Because you have your page two. What do you have in your page two? Task step, key points, task standard. And your... Ghani 9 events, the part is in the notes to trainer. Mm. Yes. Your notes to trainer is Ghani 9 events minus G3. Depending on how the trainer let you write the thing. Yeah? So, why is task step important to be structured? When you're conducting your M4, which part that you are performing, the trainer measure you by your task step? 
your demonstration. I always tell my learner, your demonstration, I'm measuring your, uh, your entire demonstration based on your detailed task step, not sub-task feeder, detailed task steps. So if you conduct your demonstration, I cannot see the step you cannot conduct anymore. So all my learners, their task steps are all beautiful. Because I told them I'm measuring them by this, and learners will do whatever that's measured by. Then explain and demonstrate which are the two colors you cover. It must be your key points and your task standard. While you demonstrate that segment, then you're explaining the task step and key point. And once you understand that, everyone will conduct based on a consistent model. If you don't, so by panning it down, it's about structure, Damien. It's not about assessment. Okay? Assessment is also structured because you have an assessment plan. Also in DDDLP, you talk about writing, learning how to write structured plan and with the detailed instructions. Okay, that is the meaning of structure. Okay, whereas assessment is about measuring the result of the candidate's performance. Competent or not yet competent. Ah, and summative assessment is the final result. And the continuous assessment has a final result. I use the IT example. It's a lot easier. And some of you are educated in the US. You realize that they have four assessments a year. And uh, uh, every two weeks, they have assessment. And then they have their final exam for US. In UK, you have two exams, mid-year and final year. Yeah. So in the US, you go for exam a lot more frequent than UK. That's why UK, they can get a bit drunk first, then they go for <laughs> the, uh, the two mid-year exam. Okay? A bit more freedom in between. Yes? Okay? <laughs> okay, good. So now, uh, you got me uh, the definition of structured. Okay? Very important. Because the whole of IL only and talk about structured plan. Nothing else. Unstructured, we are not interested. Because unstructured, you don't have to attend a course at all. And then there's no professionalization. Also, very important. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to go to the previous group. I only cover four assessment methods. I didn't cover the recognition for prior learning. The recognition of prior learning, the person doesn't have to attend an assessment. Okay, he's out of this box altogether. The recognition of learning is the person don't even have to attend the training. So I'll elevate the recognition of learning outside of the assessment box. So this person comes in with experience. Okay, so recognition for prior learning requires that there are two options. One is to submit portfolio, artifacts. Portfolio. And after that, last but then, interview. Found it, but it's a very tedious task. So if you want to qualify for module one, what type of portfolio do you think the trainer must submit? Class. Classroom training. What kind of portfolio the learner must submit? Definitely your assignment. Not. Right? Your program over Q1A, your lesson plan. And what else do you think you need to submit in this portfolio? A videotape or two videotape of him facilitating a lesson. Yeah? And then maybe he has to submit his evaluation result. Okay. So then what during the interview, what do you think the interviewer does? The interviewer will ask question to the why question. Give him tricky question to answer. Ask him how does he structure his lesson plan. Hopefully he can answer his lesson plan is structured based on Ghani and Cope and explain in detail. Why do you think the interview asks questions? Because he's afraid that this guy bullshit. So, so uh, portfolio are not assessed in front of an assessor. That's why the interview have to ask a lot of questions. Okay, good. 
Uh, there's another way you can go through this. They attend an assessment first. They don't attend training, they just go only for assessment. So they skip all the training, they go for assessment. If they clear the assessment, they will pass. That is no, not skills recognition. That is known as recognition of current competency. Okay, another set of recognition for prior learning. Uh, this is recognition for current competency. But these two are for people with experience or without experience. They must be people who are competent with experience and confident with the theories that they can combine them and go for it itself. Okay, uh, ACLP, we have a route for these two recognition for prior learning and for current competency. Okay, you can go to our website, we actually have a, a, a for invite people to do that. Then, of course, if they don't have the competency, then of course they will join your lesson and uh, attend the ACLP lesson. Okay, uh, so we actually have learners that will join maybe module 4 because module 4 is very new to them but they're already consulted in the workplace they've done classroom training uh, they go for module 3, module 4 and D1 and M2 yeah so that is recognition for prior learning and current competencies okay so if you have uh, people who are very experienced and you think that they don't need to attend ACLP or uh, you can coach them on Gani 9 events and Salmon 5 stages. Uh, you ask them to do their videotape, write out their assignments, and then uh, apply for recognition for prior learning and go for interview. And this is where the interviewer will really interview the person. We don't interview you just surface. What is Salmon 5 stages? We'll ask you, okay, based on the plan, could you tell me which part is which stage? Uh, we may even give you scenarios for you to map out uh, a code learning cycle, etc. Uh, for recognition for project. Does that answer the question? Yes? Okay, good. So these are certain options. A good assessment center will always have spectrum for this. Okay. Uh, then next. Give me a moment. Okay, so this is my answers. Okay, the answer sheet is here. Going to delete group three because your class doesn't have a group three. Okay, so can group one share with me slide 28? 27. Yes, your presentation of what's a competency based assessment. Yes, that's very interesting. A diagram, where do you get a diagram from? Oh, so exciting. Okay, good. Group one, please. Group one silent. Okay, never mind. Uh, we will share tomorrow. Okay, on this one. Okay, very shy. Group one. Group two. Okay, so you map up the flow. Okay, can. Very good. I tell you what. We the two groups will present this tomorrow. Okay, we will do that as a start for tomorrow. Tonight, I have one thing to share with all of you. Okay, I want to focus the last five minutes on the most important document we are going to use uh, for our assessment itself. Okay, I'm glad all of you took up the E1. Uh, reason for that is because for E1 itself, it allows you to operate in the assessment uh, in the WSQ assessment market. Okay, if you take E2, uh, you, you will not be able to conduct WSQ assessment. Yep. So if you spend money on ACLP, you want to get the, all the qualification in and sharpen your saw from there. It's a much more practical module itself. Good. So I'm going to show you the assessment plan. I've uh, included it in my email. Uh, I used my copy because I highlighted quite a few things in there. Okay, this is the assessment plan, ladies and gentlemen. Remember what I said? Uh, okay, can you see the assessment plan in front of you? Yes? Okay, good. So this is the Livesmart Emporium Assessment Plan. Remember the storyline. 
in this module, you are hired as an assessor to conduct an assessment on behalf of this Smart Emporium. Okay, and, uh, uh, and the topic is on customer experience under the skills framework. This is under the... Which industry is this? Familiar? Yes? Yeah, I think some of you have covered that. That is the assessment plan. Uh, the version for assessment plan is to make sure that you are using the latest version. For your work, you don't have to amend the version control. Okay, so if you are an assessor assessing, uh, usually when they change a version, this one academy will inform all the assessors that they hired on, on the new version that they have. Okay, this is for assessor to make sure that you always take the correct copy. Now, the next thing I want you to see is the content page. Today is just an immersion. Huh? Three minutes or five minutes, I can't do much. Okay, but the content page that the, based on the one that I built is super important because I've highlighted by using colors. The first section provides an overview of the assessment plan. It's in blue. They talk about the purpose of assessment, context of assessment. Okay, so let me know why my cursor has gone a bit bonkers. Okay. Okay, the first section one is about overview of the assessment plan. You can read it on your own time. Okay. Section two, three is about the instructions. 3 and 7 are on instructions of the assessment plan. When you talk about the observation checklist, assessment record that assessor use is in 4, 5, 6, is in red. Those are the documents that assessor use to conduct assessment. Section 7 is about instructions to the assessor on how to conduct the assessment. So, you need to know this because if you don't, then the assessment plan is too detailed a document. So I'm going to go to the content page again, bring it slightly smaller. Okay, overview is the just an overview one and two of the assessment plan. Three is the detailed instruction, and the seven in black. The observation checklist is in four, five, six. We call it assessment record for role play, assessment record for oral questions to test the knowledge. Realize different instructional methods is for different methods. Different assessment method is to assess either skills, knowledge, or attitude. Your skills and attitude will be assessed in the role playing. The knowledge will be assessed in the oral questions. Yeah? Types of knowledge, types of skills, M1. When you come to the assessment module, you use different methods to assess different things, whether it's a show me or tell me. And, and uh, these are instructions to conduct assessment. So why do you think assessor needs instructions to conduct assessment? What do you think? Why do you think assessor needs instructions to conduct assessment? Consistency. Consistency is about the whole plan. Yeah, so instruction for assessors will need that. Yes, consistency. So that when the con assessor conducts the assessment, there's some form of consistency in the way they set up, they prepare, they record, and they give feedback, and whether they tell the candidate that the appeal process or not. Yep. Then the red part. Why does the assessor need to have observation checklists? It's for them to observe and record evidence consistently and in a valid manner. Okay, so now. The overview we will cover tomorrow. I've highlighted some things in blue. Okay, in the overview, they talk about when the assessment plan was confirmed, who did they consult? It was many years ago. Okay, competency assessed. What are the competencies they will be assessing based on the ability state? Why do you want to conduct the assessment? Is it to give a final result or is it for that mistake? For this, do you think this is going to be a final result or for diagnostic or formative? What do you think? The purpose of this is 
what do you think the purpose of this assessment would be in one point three? Formative, summative, diagnostic, or continuous? What do you think? Again? Summative. Summative? What type of assessment is this? Yeah. Summative. Yeah, because we want to confirm the result. And then when the person confirms the result, it will get a statement of attainment for this module. The statement of attainment is like every one of your modules in ACLP, you will receive a government confirmation and certificate that you are competent in the professional qualification. Yeah, so that's why this the moment we read this, it is submitted. And it's yeah, okay. Then the context of assessment is important. Why does LiveSmart when they are assessing the candidate, what are they assessing based on? Based on their SOP, based on the legal environment, the organize have you all learned this term before? A call O I L and have you all learned this before? No? Okay. Uh, in M4, your task set must be based on organization SOP. Yeah. And this one is based on I is industry. Retail industry requirement. And also the legal no, legal requirement. So when you're writing your task step key points and task standard. You remember to pen in the organization SOP, the industry requirement, the ISO's requirement, and any of the legal requirements in your task step points and task standard. That's for M4. Then when you come to assessment, those things will be converted to the assessment plan to assess the learner itself. Okay? So if you are so take for example, okay, your company asks you to write an assessment plan to assess some of your ground operating staff. Then your assessment checklist for the skills skills assessment must include everything in the company SOP. You must consider whether all the WSH safety requirements are met. If you are using the uh, skills framework, then you have to add in the ability statements. Yeah? Then you can use that to assess the staff. You cannot come up with the assessment plan on your own. Correct? It must meet the OIL. Yeah? Uh, this is the uh, okay. yes. Come under one. What ROE? Rule of uh, evidence. Rule or evidence is the details, the criteria part. Okay. But your criteria in four section four five six must meet the purpose and context. The scope. Right. If your purpose and context did not outline which SOP, then your ROE. At in section four, five, and six, uh, four, four, four and five is wrong. Is your assessment record? Yeah. So now the overview, the blue part, only talk about the high level scoping. Oh, for this assessment, what's the purpose? What's the context? Where will it take place? Who are the learner? Where Where is the venue? What method are we using? How long for every candidate? So if you have 1,000 candidates, how are you going to space it out? But of course, you only have one candidate for this round. Yeah? So this is the overview of the assessment. Then they will tell you, this is using the ability statement and knowledge statement. The show me evidence is using role play. The tell me evidence is using oral question. Okay? Assess how they map the two methods together into evidence gathering plan. You won't be covering a lot in this, but at least it's to tell you the show me and tell me process in our WSQ assessment. Yeah? Uh, then, this part is all the detailed instructions to conduct an assessment. Read it, browse through it, don't work too hard on it, browse through it. Okay, I put in certain things in red for good reasons. It must be because it's not clear enough. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, how to conduct a role play. How to conduct uh, oral questions? How to give feedback? How to decide the assessment outcome? How to give feedback to the candidate? Those are all instructions to, uh, for section 3 and section 7. Yeah? 
ethics. We are talking about your rules of ethics. Your rules of evidence are old, must meet the purpose and the context that scope up at the beginning. In the so later on, when you're developing your task step points with task standard here, okay, we didn't break it out that way. We combined them. Okay. Uh this all these things should have taken up from your exact SOP itself. Yeah? And here. You are only looking at action verbs. Okay, because these are skills. These are all showy evidence. And this is the assessment criteria that the candidate must show. And when the candidate is performing, you are marking against this. Okay? You are marking against this. Yep, and all this. Okay? This is what you'll be doing. Then the oral question. In front, put 15 minutes. Here, put 10 minutes. Got some issue, right? Or a get, a assessor get very confused. Which is the duration? Another issue. We'll map out the oral question and the suggested answers. Okay, so in your M4 assessment of learning checklist, there is a column called knowledge. You put down your questions, you convert into text tool. You also put down the answers there. Then you observe and mark. So this is your oral question for this module. Then there's a summary assessment record. Okay, to combine the result of skills and knowledge. Okay, and the overall result and assessment signature. Because why this is needed? Because you assess two methods. In school, you assess one method. So you only have one paper. Okay. And this is the part where you put down your feedback, the feedback assessment outcome and candidates uh, uh, your your own signature and after you brief the candidate whether she or he accept the result this will be the responses here there's a code of practice for assessments uh, you need to read at least 1 to 14 uh, I deleted 11 because this is not a Singapore legislation yet uh, but the rest of it we can read on our own. There's a few procedure that is here. I pen it, uh, we also need to know. There's a role play instruction for the customer played by the assessor. There's also instruction for the role play candidate to be played by the retail associate, which is going to be me in the final assessment. Um, but of course, during the assessment itself, I may, you know, uh, I will not always meet all the criteria, so I will lend myself a not yet competent result. Okay, so in your final assessment itself, you will be assessing with a not yet competent result. It's not in the content page, but I will sneak in a SOP here. And the SOP is not the same as the criteria all the time. So it presents some problems because even the exchange and refund policy on level law is not included in section 4 of the assessment criteria. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Uh, and uh, there's this part of it that we need to work on, but uh, I'm not going to ask you to start work. Uh, 7.5, you need to have a product that you want to assess okay and because we are uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow and we have to develop the logistic checklist uh, we also need to have the picture of the product that you have at home and you take a picture of product that you add here okay there's a pre pre assessment briefing checklist for your reference that you have to develop in full Okay, but I will also give you a sample copy so that you can easily adapt it to your own usage and don't take three hours for it. Maybe take an hour for it. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is an assessment plan, a browsing of pages uh, in a total of an uh, overview, instructions on three and seven and the assessment records with all the detailed criteria in section 4 and 5 and 6 itself. Can you just browse through a little bit 
and then tomorrow we will come in to brief the definition of an assessment. Um, what are some of the issues when you're given this assignment? What are the questions you will have for your stakeholders? Okay, now you, uh, assume, and you may ask me how much you earn, I will let you know. Okay, but <laughs> we'll see each other tomorrow. Okay, I owe you 15, uh, 11 minutes here. I'll pay back another time. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, very experienced class. Yes. Uh, just remember to throw the question at me. Don't keep too quiet. Uh, if you think that the content too thin and all that, just tell me, okay? Yeah. Okay, so tonight, uh, no, tomorrow, then I'll give you the detailed briefing checklist. I don't want you all to do so much work yet. Yeah. Okay? Good night. I see you. I'll stay back in the key questions. Bye bye. Yes. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. See you. Thank bye. you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.